my grandma requested a swancho. A swancho is a poncho with sleeves. Most of these patterns are one size fits all, but my grandma is tiny and needs some modifications, so I drafted a pattern generator. This video is a tutorial for the swancho. The pattern is available on my website, there's a link in the description. It's a pattern generator, so you can make a swancho for any sized person with any kind of yarn on any knitting machine. All you need is a few measurements and a gauge swatch. This is a beginner-friendly project. It's worked sideways with increases and decreases along the bottom edge, and stitches picked up for the sleeves. If you don't have a river attachment, you can knit stockinette sleeves with a folded hem or knit them by hand. I'm going to use my grandma's measurements for this video, and she's about an extra small. The body panel will grow to the right, so cast on 126 stitches on the left side of the machine on waist yarn. Knit 126 rows, increasing one stitch every other row to 187 stitches. Here's a close-up on the increase. By the way, my grandma is the only person who is allowed to make unsolicited knitting requests. The rest of you don't even think about it. Make sure to move the weights up as you go. Keep increasing. This is pretty easy. I'm knitting with Tam Astrocrill. It's a great machine knitting yarn that comes in lots of colors, which is good because my grandma likes bright jewel tones that are hard to find right now. There's a link to the yarn in the description. When you get to row 126, reset the row counter to zero, and then knit 126 rows. Now it's time to start decreasing. You're going to knit 126 rows, decreasing every other row to 125 stitches. Decrease. Keep decreasing. And when you're done, take it off on waist yarn. You're going to need two of these. The second one is knit exactly the same way. The next step is the sleeves. Starting at zero, rehang 30 stitches from the top of one body panel. Pull out an extra needle on the side to make a neater seam. Overlap the first stitch and then hang 30 more from the top of the other body panel. Make sure these are both facing the same direction. Shove the sweater through the beds. And then hang some weights. Bring up the bottom bed and transfer every other stitch to the ribber for one by one ribbing. Now 
knit 60 rows of ribbing. I'm going to do a sewn bind off, so I need a long tail that's about three times the width of the work. Then take the whole thing off on circular waist yarn. Here's your sleeve. It looks a little funky in this state. Do this on both sides, making sure your sweater doesn't get twisted in the middle. Finish the sleeves with a stretchy bind off. I use a sewn bind off that's very similar to a Kitchener stitch. In through an old stitch, out through a new stitch. In through an old stitch out through a new stitch. When you get to the end, pull off the waist yarn. That's a nice stretchy edge. Mattress stitch the sleeve seam. When you get down to the body of the sweater, join the live stitches together with a Kitchener stitch. In through an old stitch, out through a new stitch. In through an old stitch, out through a new stitch. Here's a closer look. When your seam is done, pull off the waist yarn. And then you get a lovely, almost invisible seam. To find the edge of the neckline, fold each body panel in half and mark the center. I don't have stitch markers, so I'm using safety pins. Measure out 5 inches on either side of the center and add another marker. Do this for both body panels. Then close the shoulder seam from the sleeve to the marker with a mattress stitch. Here's the final swancho. And here it is, washed and blocked with the ends woven in. I'm sending this one off to my grandma so she has something cute to wear to the theater. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments what kind of knitting machine you work with and what kind of yarn you'd make this out of.